Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanelungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanelungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. We've got a second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can head there and check out the content that's there. And We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or actually this same channel that um, I'm on. We also have a Patreon, so you guys can feel free to become members. And yeah, so check out the things that I mentioned. You can find them in the description box. And just enjoy the content that we're putting out there. And um, a big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Just thank you for everything. And I hope you guys are doing alright. And may you stay blessed. So today as you can tell from the title. I'll be reacting to Tina is confused with fortune telling. And, and predestination. A big shout out to the person that um, suggested this. Thank you. And yeah. So without wasting time. Let's get into the video. The next question from this mic. My name is Tina. Um, I'm a pharmacy student and I'm a Hindu. Dr. Zake, I just want to ask, you're from India. I'm not so sure whether you're familiar with this um, practice in, among Indians, you know, um, regarding this leaf that you go and consult uh, someone. And if you manage to find your leaf, based on some pain and other things like that, your whole life, your name, parents' name, uh, past, future, what's going to happen is all written in that leaf. I don't know whether this is a practice of Hinduism or is something made by the temples or people. And if so, if everything is already written, how is it comparing Hinduism or maybe this practice with Islam um, fate and free will. Thank you. The sister posed the question that there may be certain practices in India about picking up leaf, which mentions about the future. There are different types of practices. It may not be part of the scripture, but there are different different types, mainly talking about the future. Jyotish, you know, you go to Jyotish to a fortune teller. Go to a fortune teller. Different types. You see on the streets, there are many cards kept and a parrot goes and picks up a card and then they read and that talks about the future. You go to a machine, put your date of birth and the machine tells you something. Now, based on this, based on this, you go, it's very common and people make a fast buck out of it. I'll first tell you about it. There was a psychologist in States who taught a class of 100 students and at the end of a week, he said, I will tell you about your past to each student. And he wrote to each student separately. He gave them a chat. He said, don't open. You open together. And after you open, you tell me how accurate was I in my talking about your past. So all the students open. And 95% of the students, they said that the professor was more than 90% correct. 5% said that he was 80% correct. The key to it was the professor wrote the same thing for everyone. For example, you go to a machine and give a birth date and the machine will tell you something bad is going to happen in the next 10 days. Even if 100 good things happen, something bad will happen. The next person, the machine will say that something good is going to happen. Even if 100 bad things happen, something good will happen. So most of these things talking about the future it's a big fuss. Sorry, I just wanted to say because like my family, it's a thing to do this. So my leaf was found and they read it. So things in it like, I guess, you know, science student try to think logically, rational, whether it's possible. Because sometimes when some things they say, for example, this is your mother's name, they got it correct. This is your father's name, they got it correct. And I think it's in Sanskrit. so. It's like you have to believe entirely what the guy is saying because you can't check it yourself whether it's right or wrong. At, uh, I think I was 16 when I read it. So they said the age where you read it was 16. It's too like 
maybe out of 10 things, 8 things he got correct. And it's like sometimes I try to think how do they do this and it seems a lot of people also come. So it's like this logic and the faith, it's like a, there's a fight there. Which should I believe? I'll just come to it, sister. Let me complete my answer. That will cover your question also. As I was saying, that most of the people that do is a big fast. It's a big gimmick. Just to make fast money. What Quran says, which I mentioned in my talk, Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90, Ya Ladin Amanu, O you believe in Namal Khamru or Mysuru, most certainly intoxication and gambling. Well, at Sabu al Aslamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rich Suminamili Shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. First thing you will come to fluent. Abstain from the handwork that you may prosper. Here, Quran says alcohol, gambling, fortune telling, and dedication of stone. Fortune telling is same. These are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. Quran does not say that no one can predict the future. See, many Muslims don't realize what the Quran says. Alcohol, gambling, fortune telling, dedication of stones. These are Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it. Quran does not say no one can predict the future. But most of the people who predict the future, they are just doing a gimmick to make fast money out of it. Based on the Quran and the Hadith, we come to know that there are Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that there are jinns who listen and they pass on the message to certain people. We as Muslims should not be involved in it. It is prohibited. But that does not mean no one can predict the future. Most of the people who claim are all wrong. But there may be certain human beings who can predict the future. But we as human beings should not indulge in it, whether it's right or wrong. It will be bad for us. So based on this, the Quran says you should not indulge in it. Quran does not say you cannot. There are many people who talk about palm reading. And there are times when some people are 50% correct, some people are 70% correct. If you put heads or tails, 50% will be right, sister. No, heads or tails, 50% will be right. So some people do it just by chance. There may be few, maybe a very small percentage who may have the art of knowing about the past. That is mentioned in the Hadith of Prophet But we as Muslims should not indulge in it. We should not indulge in black magic. We should not indulge in fortune telling. Why? It will cause us harm. So in this context, sister, we as Muslims are not allowed. There may be a very small percentage which may tell quite a major portion of your past or of your future a very small portion but we as muslims are not allowed to indulge in it that's a commandment like how we are not allowed to have alcohol we aren't allowed to gamble so indulging in it is not good it is prohibited the same thing i'll tell you that as a human being if you agree that quran is the word of god the quran does not allow a human being to indulge in it it will be nothing but loss in the long run for you Hope that answers the question, sister. Now, I mean, like, now once I've already seen it, I rather would have not seen it. But because now you know it, and then it's stuck here, it's a bit difficult sometimes when you want to just believe in fate or free will. And then in this context, do you believe that uh, we can still practice free will or is on fate? Sister asked a question that if you know what is happening, then can you practice free will? As I told you, there's no one you can say who can 100% talk about the future. So even if you're, like you said, out of 10 things, 8 are coming correct. You may never know the thing which hasn't come correct yet will come correct or not. So you yourself said 80% correct. So it may come, may not. So it's in the free will. As far as Islam is concerned, Islam... We have to believe in destiny, that is Qadr. It's one of the pillars of Iman that we Muslims should believe in Qadr in destiny. I will tell you what is destiny as far as Islam is concerned. That is clearly mentioned in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a child is born, the father is wound on the neck. It's mentioned in the Quran. Everything what you're going to do, Allah knows. But that does not interfere with your free will. Allah has given a free will. For example, if a teacher is teaching in a classroom for one year, just before the final examination, the teacher predicts that this student, he will get first class. He'll come out first in the class. This student, he'll get second class. This student, he will fail. It's just an example, brother. Don't feel bad. <laughs> now, 
when the examination takes place after the results out this student comes out first class first he gets second class this student fails now can the student do fail tell the teacher because the teacher predicted i will fail therefore i fail any blame the teacher yes or no no why because the teacher knew this student intelligent used to do his homework used to attend the class throughout the year this student average this student used to go for movies play hooky bunk school so teacher predicted same way allah subhanahu wa taala is ilm e ghaib now the difference between the teacher and allah is the teacher the human being can make a mistake can be right 99% but not 100% always allah has ilm e ghaib he has knowledge of the future but he has given you a free will for example you come at a cross road there is road 1 2 3 4 you can choose any you choose road 2 so allah knows in advance on this particular date on the 29th of september you will come at a cross road you will choose road 2 it is not because allah has mentioned you will choose road 2 you are choosing it is because you will be choosing allah road in advance for example after you pass standard 12 to a levels you can either become a doctor or engineer you choose to become a doctor so allah knows in advance that after you pass your a levels you will choose to become a doctor choice is yours not because allah has written you have become a doctor because you have chosen allah wrote in advance now once you have come at a cross road 1 2 3 4 you have taken road 2 you come at another cross road a b c d e you choose road d allah knows in advance that when you come at the next cross road you will choose road d so it is because you will be choosing allah road otherwise people will say it's mentioned my takdeer i will commit murder i committed murder who's to blame allah is to blame not me if it's mentioned my destiny i'm going to rob i rob who's to blame allah is to blame allah gave you the option that after you finish your college you can either rob or earn by doing hard work you choose to rob so allah knows after you finish your college you could do hard work or you could rob you choose to rob so you can't blame allah allah knows in advance allah is ilm e ghaib so there is something like taqdeer destiny in islam but allah has given us a free will allah has given us a free will we are responsible allah has made the test and allah says in the quran in surah mulk chapter number 67 verse number 2 allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata it's allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good and deeds this life sister is the test for the hereafter so that's the reason islam say don't indulge in fortune telling about the future now as you are saying something is always clicking here so you may think that he may have told you okay at the age of 30 you'll die so you may be thinking or i'm going to die you may not die so what if you have done a mistake forget it sister take it out you lead your normal life try and find out which is the truth what you have to do sister do a research do a research of various religious scriptures which is the true scripture that will give you serenity calmness peace of mind read that scripture follow it and forget what the fortune teller has told you even if it comes out to be right no problem you do what you feel is right based on your research that how to lead a life so this quran sister is the last and final guidance given by almighty god to humanity it's not meant only for the muslims or the arabs or the malay it's meant for the whole of humanity and if you read this book inshallah you would get peace of mind i request the volunteer to gift you a copy of the english translation of the quran you read it inshallah it will give you peace of mind of that is the question very interesting video um i like at the end of the video how he says do what you think do what you think is right according to your research don't just accept something because someone is convincing you that's why um you don't force things in life you don't force someone to believe into in something that they don't believe in it's a choice for you to take his word it's a choice of it's a choice that you have to make if you want to believe her believe the other person you know whatever the case is we all have a choice in this world we've been given that option in life where we can make our own decisions so we should make sound decisions we shouldn't just um 
out on things without researching this was a very lovely video and thank you for the person that suggested this make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video